Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm rolling out virtual peace and purpose retreat powered by none other than McDonald's, the world famous brand everybody loves and knows. You are joining myself today, Andre Hill, and my fellow uh, McDonald's owner, operator, comrade, uh, John Sauls, and we'll be talking business or balancing family and business as an owner operator on today's business exchange. John, welcome to Rolling Out. Welcome to the virtual retreat. We are so happy to have you here. And it's cool because you are, like myself, a newer operator, um, a second gen operator, and you're here to make history, man. Yes, so sir. thank you. If you could thank just you for give us a brief intro- Oh yeah, no problem. If you could just give us a brief introduction on yourself. Uh, well, everybody, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to be here and to be speaking with you. My name is John Sauls. I'm a next generation McDonald's owner operator out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I currently have one store in my organization and I uh, help supervise and overlook my mother's organization, which has seven stores. And we're very proud of all the things that we do here in the community and that, and that we do for people and how we can help build. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a graduate and uh, ketchup is in my veins. I was born into McDonald's. It's, it's, it's been all I know and I'm trying to master it. Nice, man. Like you said, it's all about the community and, and those that we serve in the community. Um, so let's get into this. Um, but somebody, somebody from somebody um, with your know-how, with your understanding of McDonald's, I know that you were basically born into this thing. Did you always want to do this coming up? If we're going to be 100% honest, I, I absolutely did not. Uh, my childhood, I, I grew up in the play place. We have a restaurant with the play place. So, you know, every day mom went to work, I had to tag along. So, you know, and she, she worked hard. So I, I'm spending eight hours, 10 hours a day in the restaurant, putting together Happy Meal boxes. So by the time I could work, I really didn't want anything to do with McDonald's because I didn't realize how much McDonald's had done for me until later in my life. So uh, by the time I was working age, I went and got a job at a shoe store because I always like to talk to people and be very personable. Uh, So that was the route I took. But, you know, after graduating from school and looking around at the job market and what was available for me, I realized that working in the family business would be in my best interest. And it's been one of the best decisions I've made thus far because they're like you said, there's no other brand in the world like McDonald's. It's America's best first job, and uh, you can really build a career here from crew all the way up to whatever it is you want to be. So what was it about McDonald's that that, um, finally led you back into uh, working under the arches? Uh, I think I'd have to say the people. You know, I think McDonald's is such a dynamic brand that there's so many different types of people and everybody from all walks of life that – you can literally learn so much, you know, people speaking four and five different languages in the kitchen, you know, so it's just, it's, it's the amount of knowledge that you can get from the people you work with and, and the, the feeling of joy, seeing them actually enjoy their work and enjoy working with you and for you and, uh, and just doing the right things. And, uh, McDonald's is, it, it's the number one brand in the world who wouldn't want to work for McDonald's, you know? So, uh, you know, once I got my degree and wisened up, I realized where I needed to be at. Hmm. That's so true, man. I've, I've worked at a few different places, even spent um, roughly seven years in corporate America before I decided to to come into business with my mom. Unlike you, my path was a little different because I wasn't born into this. My mother worked in corporate America for many, many years, but uh, me and her always had an entrepreneurial spirit. And it's so crazy when I left corporate, you know, um, um, I I didn't realize like how entrenched in corporate America I was. I couldn't even I was I was in people. I was actually um, in in HR for quite some time in corporate. But it was so hard at first for me to understand or or for me to um, reach my people in the in the store level when I was working there. Um, just because of how entrenched I was in the normal seas of, of corporate America and McDonald's, literally um, every store is like a melting pot of America. And so it was, it, you know, once I kind of realigned um, myself into uh, understanding how to, how to touch my people 
things began to, to get a lot better for me, get a lot easier for me. Um, I began to experience a lot more growth internally in our business. And, uh, you know, I can't imagine myself doing anything else you know, at, at this point in time in my life. So um, tell us what balancing family and business in a 24-7 business enterprise means to you. Uh, it means a lot because, you know, your business takes care of your family, but your family takes care of you. So you, you have to find that balance. Uh, you know, I, I, have, I have three small children and they need my time. They need my attention. They need me to pour into them. And then I've got stores filled with employees who need the same thing. So, you know, you got your family and your mech family. And uh, I think the balance comes in is, is just recognizing everybody's needs. It, it, it's really learning people and learning what they need and just being there for them when they need you. And I think if you can do that for your people and for your family, they'll have a lot of respect for you. And then they'll respect when you have to put that, that boundary up. Like, you know, today is my day where I'm going to be immersed with my family. Try not to bother me if it's not critical, if the building is on fire. And then you want your family to understand the same thing. You know, today I have a lot of meetings to take care of. I've got a lot of people to talk to and meet. You know, I'd appreciate it if, if we could keep things civil until another day. So, you know, the, it, it's not always going to be easy. Balancing anything is never going to be easy. It's a skill that I think you have to continue to work at no matter what level you're at. You know, because I, I see older operators, I see younger operators, and they, they have, you know, different things that they deal with. But everybody is still trying to figure out how to balance life and how to balance family and how to take care of their family. So for me, my number one thing is if I'm not taking care of business, my family can't eat. So, you know, I try to take care, to take care of business in the restaurants and then come home and, and make sure my family is straight. So it's essential that you are able to balance because there's been times where my family feels like you're at McDonald's too long or you, but they don't understand that you, they can't see the process of what you're actually trying to build. So, you know, I think, the, the most part of balancing is the clear communication. Everybody needs to understand and be on the same page and understand what the goal is. And, you know, if we can all understand the goal, it's, it's going to make it easier for everybody to reach theirs. So that's how I try to balance it myself. What, what are some things that work well for you? Man, before I answer, you need to repeat that statement that you made initially after I asked this question. What's that? About, about how the family is there for you. A lot of times you're there for the business or the businesses. Say, so repeat that statement because that was just crucial. I, I, I don't know if you're talking about the one where I said you got to take care of the business so the business can take care of the family and you got to take care of your family because your family takes care of you. you Man, know? that's so, so real. That, that, you know, that's so real. Yeah. You, it's, you, it's, I like to keep in contact with all my family, cousins, uncles, yeah. aunts, grandmas. I, I want to speak to everybody, even if it's just to see how you're doing or how you're feeling today, you know, just so you know somebody cares about you. Because at the end of the day, everybody just wants a good group of people around them that care about their best interests and what they need. So, you know, the best way to do that is being a genuine person and and uh, and pouring into people. It's that full circle approach. How do I allow this business to provide for my family? And how do I ensure that my family knows that they are top priority? However, this business is what allows our family to prosper. Exactly. You know, that's that's the dynamic that we all have to achieve in order to to have the optimum amount of success, because it is a family. It's it's a family thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, and just just and what people don't understand is McDonald operators, we literally operate a small business there. It's, it's cash. It's, uh, uh, you know, we measure things by the penny because we have to, or, or by the dollar or what have you, because we have to. Um, and even some of our staff members, our family, you know, so there's things that we do as owner operators, especially those who have stores in underdeveloped neighborhoods or what you will call the inner city or what have you, you know, we do things for a lot of our staff that you wouldn't typically find at a fortune 500 company. You know, we've paid for um, people's children's funerals. We've paid for, uh, people's dental work because, um, you know, their insurance didn't cover certain aspects of, of some dental work that was needed. You know, there's things that we do. I, I can go on and on, but there's things that we do 
that we don't really, often speak about those things though. Yeah, we, we don't often speak about especially especially yes. African American yeah. owner operators who do have the majority of those stores within these neighborhoods that, that I'm talking about and have to be there in order to help elevate and um, you know to help do things for people who who just don't have the family to assist them or or to have the means to assist them to do those things. I agree 100 percent. You know, I, I can think of countless times where, you know, people don't think that there's no way. And, and then they reach out to my mother. You know, I, I've only been an operator for about eight months now, so I, I haven't had the chance to personally, you know, bless anyone like that. But I, I know from experience that, you know, my mother will take care of somebody and, and humbly do it and you'll never even know about it. You know, and and that, trust me, man, that, that, those price on. Hey, trust me. Those black teenagers that work for you, every time they see you come in that building and they see that a black person can do what you do, lead an organization, a million dollar empire, and do it successfully, you're doing a lot more. You're, you're creating a lot more blessings than what you think. I appreciate that, Bo, because that's, honestly, that's, 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 that's how really I got my value. That's how I got my spark is seeing somebody else do it. I said, well, I know it's possible. You know, and I think we need more of that. People need to see that this is achievable, this is attainable, and, and these are the steps you need to take, and this is how you need to conduct yourself if you want to be amongst this group. Exactly. Exactly. So what have you learned about yourself as you've navigated these challenges? <laughs> That's a good question, man. <laughs> I, I, I've learned a lot about myself over the years. I I've learned that I'm impatient and maybe I need to practice patience a little more, not only at work, but with my family. Uh, it depends how many times you've asked somebody to do something. Let's, well, that's true. Let's preface kids, it with that. Kids, you got to ask them a hundred times. <laughs> uh, what I learned about myself is I have way more potential than I thought I had. You know, you, you start out in a position when you're going through the program and you have to, you know, jump through each and every hoop. And then you finally get to the finish line and you're like, well, what's next? What do I do now? So what I learned about myself is, you know, I, I do have a lot more power and influence than I think I have. And I need to, you know, make sure I'm putting that in the right light. And, and more people are watching me than I think. So I need to be careful, you know, with the things that I do. And uh, I just learned that McDonald's is for me. I, I never thought I was, you know, be in that position because I, I, I used McDonald's all the time for dinner. I used to always be at McDonald's. I was sick of McDonald's, but I realized that McDonald's is the reason that I was able to have the opportunities that I had. You know, it, it's the reason I was able to go to college. It's the reason I was able to, you know, find a good job. It's the reason that I know so many people in, in my city through the network of our restaurants. So, uh, I just have to applaud McDonald's for for teaching me, you know, what it is to be a business person because it, it, they, they it can simply teach you business. You know, that's that's what I want all my managers and crew to understand. It. You know, this isn't just a job. This is a place for you to come and learn. And everybody should be learning every day. So that that's one thing I try to do is learn something new every day. And if I can teach something to somebody and hopefully that'll stick with them. So. I think that's why the biggest change is is, is, is transitioning from, uh, you know, just learning to being the coach and uh, mm -hmm. starting to, to tell people what to look for and what mm -hmm. to recognize and how to react. So I think that's been my biggest adjustment that I'm making now. Hmm. That's real. Yeah, you talked about that patience thing, man. That's something I definitely had to acquire that I thought I had until I actually – um, came into McDonald's myself and realized how how short of patience I actually was. So um, patience, learning how to create more patience has really humbled me. It's, it's allowed me to get stronger as a leader. Um, having patience has allowed me uh, the understanding of, of why it's beneficial to gather your thoughts before you say things to people so you don't say the wrong thing or send the wrong message, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I think that's one of the the biggest things I learned about myself is how impatient I was and how patience can literally ruin an empire. Yeah. If you don't get it in check. And I, I guess yeah. another thing I learned, if I can cut back in, is being resilient, because there's going to be a lot of times that you hear no. And no doesn't always mean never. It just means not right now. 
And that's what people need to understand. You have to keep going. You have to keep trying. You know, no is not the end of the road. That's just the end of the road. Maybe with that person, you'll get a yes from someone else, you know. So you have to stay persistent and stay dedicated to what you want. And that's the fastest way to get it is if you believe that you're going to get it and that you're doing the things to get you there to get it. So, you know, being resilient because, you know, when I first started out, people were telling me all types of things about about uh, McDonald's and what it would take to be an operator and how long it would take me and, and this and that. And I had my own plans up in my mind of what I wanted to do and, and they didn't align. So, you know, that's one thing I had to get over and just stay resilient and stay dedicated to what I was trying to accomplish. Yeah, that's so true. Have to be resilient. Uh, <clears throat> so how do you set career goals for yourself? That's interesting. Uh, goal setting for me used to be a lot easier because I, I all my goals were tailored around becoming an operator. And so I was, you know, doing this to get to there and doing this to get to there. But now uh, I look at I look at, you know, the goals my mother sets. I look at the goals of people, you know, mentors and people who influence me, their goals. And I compare them with what I want. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to put my goals more around people. I'm trying to become more people focused. You know, how many people can I help? How many people can I put in a position to win? How many people can I build up? That That's where my goals are now. But from a professional standpoint, you know, uh, I'm looking to grow. All my goals have to be around growth, whether it's physical, mental, physical or spiritual or emotional. I, I need to grow. I need to grow in these areas. I just want to continuously learn. So whatever I can do, whether it be reading a book or listening to someone speak or, you know, just talking to a stranger, whatever it may be, I, I want to have that type of influence. Uh, and my goals now are around that. Now, do you ever build goals for your family or like the dynamics of family? And also do you, uh, and I, I'm sure you do, we all do, right? We have um, um, annual preparation meetings and all, all types of things, but talk about goals for your business as well, or goal setting for your business. You know, for my family, my main focus is I want my, I want my children to be able to speak well, I want them to be able to read well, and I want them to be able to write well because that is the key. That, that's what my parents always told me. That's what my grandmother told me, you know, make sure you can read and write. And uh, so for me right now, my, my children are young, they're five and four. So my goal is to make sure, you know, you're, you can count, you can write your numbers, you can recognize words, you can read, because that, that is the key. Reading is literally the key it, it, and, and comprehension. So around family, you know, I want us to be a tight knit family. I want us to eat dinners together. I want us to read and write, but you know, everything doesn't always work the way you want it to work, whether it be family or business, you know, my business goals, they're, they're all around growth. I want to increase my staff size. I want to increase the amount of transactions we're doing daily. I want to increase top line sales. Uh, but really I want to be a better leader myself. So, you know, my goals are always, kind of selfish because they're tailored for me. How, how can I be better? And I feel like if I'm better, then I can be better for everybody else. And that in turn can lift them up. So I just try to set goals that I know are going to help people have something of value. You know, if you're adding value and you're going to get paid, you might not get paid right away. You might not get paid as much as you think you deserve. But if you're adding value to somebody's situation, they are definitely going to take notice. Because as a business owner and leader in my restaurant, if I see somebody adding value, I want to pour into them. I want to coach them. I want to train them up because I know that this person is a leader and they have what it takes. And people are looking for that. You know, they're, look, they're, they're, they're judging you. As, as, this is as real as it gets. They're judging you as soon as they see you based on what you're wearing, what you're doing, how you're speaking. You know, so it's important the way, you know, you carry yourself in public settings and uh, and the things you say. So. You know, I'm looking I'm looking for people who are saying those words that, that make your brain go, oh, yeah, that person gets it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for that individual. Mm. No, that's so true, man. That's so true. Yeah, um, I think it's always important to challenge yourself. Right. Sometimes we we attain a goal and we just plateau and then we feel mm -hmm. like we're just going with emotion. But if you continue to find ways to challenge yourself 
you will always grow, you know, and, and when it comes to family, I think, I think more so than business, um, I'm trying to, uh, you know, where I am now. So like yourself, I, I have two kids. They both live um, a state away from me. They're, you know, they're in Michigan. I'm in Ohio. Uh, we're roughly three, three and a half hours away from each other. But a goal of mine is to purchase a home in Michigan so that, um, you know, my kids have have a place to to play outside in the backyard. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my daughter can swing on the swing set. My son can play basketball, um, uh, you know, in the, in the driveway. Right. Yeah. Uh, or what have you. And so um, I, I think as you as you grow, um, you will always have more things that you can achieve. Right. But what is important? What's going to bring um, more love? What's going to bring more ease? Um, you know, what's going to bring more freedom to your life. Right. And and that's those are the things that I look at uh, when setting goals. And so it's like even for my business, um, you know, we're, we we want to be on a growth mode. We, we grew this year uh, by five by by an additional five stores. And it's like, OK, now we have to figure out how do we prep ourselves for even more growth? What type of staffing does that look like? Um, you know, what does that structure look like? How do we train the folks that we already have to enable them um, to be able to go into even higher leadership levels with ease once we do start acquiring even more locations? And so, you know, again, constantly challenge yourself, constantly looking, looking uh, inward, inwardly focusing on what's going to bring those things, like I said, um, which really come down. To, to freedom, the, the opportunity of, of, you know, enhancing other people's lives or, or love or whatever you want to call it. Um, just just a total evolution of uh, family and self. I agree. You, you, you have to set goals. So that's that's one thing that, that, you know, my mother drove into me is always have a goal and always have a plan, you know. And one thing that she does that I need to start doing, she'll take a little note card and she'll have five little things on there that she wants to do every single day, you know, five different things daily, you know, and that's how you keep yourself focused. If you know what you're supposed to be accomplishing and you write it down, that's the other thing that's important. You have to write these things down. You can have goals in your head all day long. They're not real till you put them on paper. There's something about writing your goals down that helps them become achievable. So that's my word of advice to everyone is make a list and make sure you write it down. Even if it's just digitally in your phone or your iPad or whatever device you use, it needs to be visible where you can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about advice, let's go into this one. Can you give me two words of advice that you give to future entrepreneurs? Don't give up in the first couple of years because those are going to be the hardest years. They're, they're going to be they're going to be the roughest ones where it feels like no one is supporting you. No one is helping you. No one is no one sees your vision. And that's fine. They're not supposed to see your vision. It's your vision. So don't quit in the first couple of years. Whatever it is you're doing, don't give up. You know, try to try to wait it out if you can. Now, financial decision for your better well-being, then you need to do what you need to do. But if you can wait it out. Definitely wait it out because entrepreneurship is not easy, you know, and even when you get to the point you want to be at, I'm sure you can attest to this, Andre, there, there's phone calls that come in that are not good. You know, there's problems, there's issues, there's things you have to handle. So my next word of advice would be, you know, w work on your mental health. Make sure you're you're an emotionally fit person to lead people, you know, because mm -hmm. people want to follow somebody who uh, knows where they're going. If you if you have an issue and you're starting to panic and you don't know what to do, guess what? You're going to make your people panic and that's going to be even worse. So to be a leader and to be an entrepreneur, you need to exemplify those characteristics that those people have. And uh, I think that's critically important. So those would be my two pieces of advice. Don't give up in the early years because it gets greater later and uh, make sure you're a person people want to follow. And, and, and sell yourself to people. You have to build your own personal brand. No matter who you partner with, you, you have to be a brand by yourself that people want to come and endorse and want them to represent them. That, that's, that's just the way it works. You know, McDonald's is a large corporation, but they have 
a lot of franchisees and those franchisees are known in their communities. And that is what makes people want to frequent that business because they know the people who are running the business. So, you know, be somebody that people can respect and, uh, and appreciate. Man, you are dropping some real nuggets, man. I appreciate it. No it's problem. Real keys. I, I hope people have their notes and pens out right now. <laughs> you silly. <man. laughs> so you, you, you said one thing though, man, it, it really triggered me. You were talking about, um, mental health right and uh, that goes into emotional resilience um, emotional intelligence can you talk about where emotional intelligence plays a role in your relationship with your team uh most definitely you know you you have to understand your people if you're going to be a leader and you're going to have people up under you the number one thing you need to do is understand them I, i'm not necessarily saying you need to learn the love language but you need to learn what, what's going to trigger them and what's going to make them feel special. Now, I'm a firm believer in manners and just saying please and thank you. I think that goes a very long way. But, you know, you, you never want to address people when you're angry. You know, if something is, if something is making you angry, you want to take time to cool down and address it. So it sounds more like you're trying to fix the issue rather than beat up on the person. Now, I know I'm guilty of that. I'm sure some other people are because, you know, we want to see things and react right away. But a lot of times what you need to do is come in and assess the situation. So, for example, oh, the drive through is not moving. Well, you got to ask why. Why isn't the drive through moving? You can't just come in there and start screaming at the manager why isn't the drive through moving. There could be a whole list of things going on that is out of their control. So, you know, you want to dive into a situation. You, you want to feel people out. You want to see where they're at, you know, they, their dog could have just died or their grandmother could be in the hospital or, or this or that. That's why it's important to talk to your people, learn a little bit about them, see what they're interested in, what they're passionate about, you know, and if it's relatable to business, incorporate it. If it's not, then just keep it in your knowledge bank for when you have time for open discussion. But I, I feel like it's important to talk to everybody. You know, when I walk in my restaurants, I speak to everyone. Now, do you have any type of uh, meditation regimen that helps you through your long day or? Um... Uh, just prayer. And uh, one okay. thing that I started doing a while ago, I, I was looking through some different things is uh, reading a proverb every day. You know, there's 31 days in the month. There's 31 proverbs. So on the days there's 30, you do 30 and 31 on the same day. So today would be the second. Uh, I meditate, I pray, and then I listen to Proverbs too. And I just try to take out those nuggets of knowledge. So I try to read a proverb every day of the month and, uh, and see how it can apply to my life. And uh, they say, if you, read, if you read a proverb a day, every day, every month, for three years straight, that you'll become wealthy. That's, I don't know where I heard that from. Oh, uh, let me start me. reading my proverbs then, yeah, bro. You need to read them, man, because I'm not going to lie. What's today? The second? Uh, we just, I'll, read, I'll read the first two right now. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then what's so funny about that is, yeah, I don't know how true or not it is, but in my third year of doing it, I became an approved owner operator. So I, wow. can't, I can't attest to that, you know, and I know wow. that that helped my journey along the way. Look, this is what I, this is what I have. I have one of these. You know what this is? <laughs> That's a money. That's a money tree. A money tree. Yeah, it's not nice to say it doesn't do it. No, it's, it's 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 just nice. It looks good. I don't think it brings yeah. me anything, but you know, the the spoken word is what really does bring something. So it does. And I, yeah. I, I guess I meditate through music. You know, my brother he he didn't choose the path of McDonald's right away, but uh, you know he's a musician, so we we connect on there, and we actually made a, a jingle for McDonald's. Is Spicy crispy chicken jingle, which the video is available on YouTube. Little Red's crispy chicken jingle. That's my promo buzz right there. But uh, that's one way I relax too is you know listening to beats and expressing myself. So, all right, y'all, let's get John Saw's YouTube hits up. Don't forget yeah. to go tune in for sure. Um, so I, I really want to hear about this one because uh, I hope your mom is listed because I know she is a boss. So tell me this, who is part of your accountability team for business and professional growth? And I'm not even going to sit here and lie to y'all. It was mainly me because mm -hmm. and I, I even asked my mom about it. She, she definitely held me accountable, you know, because the buck stops with her. But 
for anybody trying to do something, nobody is going to be able to push you to do it the way you are. If you're waiting on somebody to bring you up, you may wait forever. You you literally have to go get it and want it. So I really, once I decided this is something that I wanted, I, I put a plan together. I looked at what it would take to do it, and I started executing. And, and that's what you have to do. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. You know, my mother, she she is a boss. So just being her son and being able to watch a boss in motion my entire life, I know played a role in uh, my development. But then, you know, Stephanie Becker, my field franchise business partner, she was excellent. The whole process of my approval, you know, we, we met monthly. She kept me on my toes. She told me what they needed to see from me and I delivered it. So, you know, you, you got to have people around you coaching and guiding you. But at the end of the day, whether you get it done or not, is going to be on you. you. You cannot sit and blame your accountability team if you fail. You know, you you have to want it. it it's for you. It's not for them. Now, they want to see you succeed. They want to see you win, but it's got to be on your terms. So those are a few people yeah. who played played major roles. And then, of course, you know, my supervisor, shout out to Juwan Thomas and shout out, you know, to my general manager, Nancy Berrios. They, they keep me accountable daily. You know, Nancy stays on me. Whatever needs to be done, she's letting me know. So I appreciate that communication and, and I appreciate everybody else within my organization because we've got a lot of good tenured people who've been with us 15 plus years, who I look at like family, you know, who who helped me rise up and, and gave me the tools and materials I needed. So I got to give a special shout out to Renika Payne while I'm on here, because that's the general manager at the store where I first started working as a night manager when I came back home from school. And uh, she's a Ray Kroc award winner, four or five time outstanding store manager. So she, she runs her business well. And just being able to watch people who, do things well is going to help you. You know, you, you do what you see. So if you, you got to surround yourself with the right people and that's the most accountable thing you can do is put the right people around you. Yeah. It's important that people understand um, nobody is going to have your back if they don't see you actually taking the initiative to try to do something yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, only then will people identify you as somebody with potential that they choose to put their name on. And so when I even talk about an accountability team for those that are watching, especially um, those that, that are in high school or in college, I just want people to understand um, not only your family uh, can be part of your accountability team, but you have mentors. Mentors are those that, uh, and they could be older or younger than you. Mentors are those that shed a lot of knowledge or share not a lot of knowledge with you, um, uh, give you tips, um, on how to enhance your skill set, give you tips on how to grow and develop um, in whatever subject matter you you know you're you're practicing in, whether that's professional, is it even personal? And then you also have to have sponsors. And what are sponsors? Sponsors are the people that talk well about you in the rooms that you can't get in yet. They bring your name in those rooms so that you can try to elevate and try to advance because a lot of things in life happen behind closed doors and you never know when people are talking about you. And so you have to understand the importance of having a team of people built around you who can do both for you. For one, help you develop yourself, your skill set, um, uh, you know, your, your, your personal business acumen or what have you. And then those folks that are sponsors that are sitting in rooms that you can't even get a chair in at this point in time, that's gonna bring you up in there. So always remember that, who's ever watching. Um, yes, that's listen, true. Because I know within business, we, we talk about people all the time. They don't know we're talking about them, but we're talking about moving them up, advancing them, putting them in a position, you know, giving them some leadership roles. So I, I just want to agree with you 100% on that. Let's talk about something that can, that can literally kill a business. Let's talk about ego. Can you tell us what role does ego play in feeling you are successful and self-awareness and self-aware that requires um, um, steady and personal development? Uh, yeah, I, I just feel like, you know, you, you have to take the Like this just goes back to knowing the people around you, you know, and if your ego is bigger, you, what, what you know, what I got going on is no bigger than what somebody else has going on. And you always have to keep that in mind. 
because at the end of the day, they're worried about what they got going on. So if I come in there with my ego pumped up, acting like only what I want matters, they're not going to want to perform. You know, every, everything has to matter to everybody. I need, it, I need it all to matter to you. And then what matters to you, you need to tell me so I know what matters to you and we can have some type of exchange. Uh, ego can definitely kill a business. You know, you, you don't want to be that arrogant leader that, you know, people are smiling in your face, but as soon as you leave, they're in your pocket. So, you know, you, you want people to have some type of loyalty to you to a certain extent, which, which is hard to get. But once you get it, you cannot put a price on it. So you, you, you have to be genuine and you have to check your ego at the door, no matter who you are, especially at McDonald's, because we're here to work as a team. You know, I, I can't do it all by myself. No one can. So, you know, that ego has to get checked at the door. You have to. I'm part of a team. And as a team, we want to be number one. Now, I don't want to be number one. I want my restaurant to be number one. I want my team to be number one. And just having that mindset of having your whole team on versus just you being on is what's going to make people want to join your team. You know, if, 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 if every time you win, only you win, that's not going to keep people motivated. Everyone has to, to, to feel some of that uh, feeling you get from winning. So you got to make sure that's flowing through your whole organization. Right. Exactly. So let's talk about this, though, because I, I kind of mentioned mentorship a little bit. Um, and a question before that, what do you see the role of mentorship to be in and what is your mentorship practice as you coach others uh, to learn from your experiences? Uh, I think mentorship is extremely important. Uh, you know, I, I look up to all the people who, who are in my life at a young age who help kind of mold and craft me and, and keep me steered towards the right direction because it's easy to uh, get carried away in the wrong things. They're all around us. They're on social media. They're on music. They're everywhere. So, you know, uh, my mentorship practices is I try to pour in everybody. And one thing we recently started doing about four years ago is there's a West End School for Boys downtown. And uh, my mother signed our organization up to mentor the, the boys from sixth to eighth grade. So that's something we've done the past couple of years that I found way more rewarding than I thought I would. It was something I initially had no interest in doing. I didn't feel like I was fit to mentor anybody. I was still young, you know, fresh out of college. But, you know, you, you can always steer people in the right direction, especially middle schools. I think they're the easiest to mold because they're they're in that stage of, you know, I want to be hip. I want to be cool. I don't know what to do. I need some direction. And you can give them that direction. You know, you can tell them, hey, that's not the way to go. That's that's going to get you in trouble. So. You know, talking to the kids and, and hearing hearing their, their life experiences and, and being able to tell them about myself. And then I guess the cool thing about mentorship is, is your mentee really looks up to you. So that makes you feel good when you, when you have people who are looking to you, you know, and they want to follow your, your role, your lead. You know, so many people told me, oh, I, my kids even say, now I want to work at McDonald's when I get older. And other kids, I want to I want to work at McDonald's. I want to do what you do. You know, that that makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're doing the right things. Uh, but I definitely think it's important if you are some a person of interest or if you're a leader or you're somebody with some influence, you, you have to put your hand back and give to someone else. That's the only way the system continues to work, because I would not be where I was if the people before me didn't do that. If they didn't, you know, my mother put me in Boy Scouts and I actually became an Eagle Scout. And my scout master is, you know, he, he's one of the most solid People I know, his name is Paul Durson, and he, he taught me so many things from tying knots to starting fires to first aid to safety. But the number one thing that Scouts was about was being a leader. You know, it was a, in the event of this happening, what do you do? You know, are you, you've got to step up. you got to make the decisions. you got to give the direction to people. And that's that's one thing that really stuck with me as well. And then you got your coaches in the schools. They're, they're mentoring people daily. So you – And, and let, me, let me add – what people don't understand is that McDonald's does a lot of outreach in the in the black community. And McDonald's Black and Positively Golden Mentors program focuses on feeding and fostering the communities that we serve by elevating future leaders in pursuit of their passions. And for people who want to know more about what McDonald's does, make sure you guys check out at We Are Golden on Instagram to learn more about McDonald's commitment to the African-American community through our Black and Positively Golden Mentor program. 
I just want to make sure to plug that so our listeners know that McDonald's is still out here. Most definitely. Yeah. So, man, I want to say thank you, John. I appreciate your time. You shared a lot of knowledge with us. You dropped a lot of keys. Um, and, you know, this, this was definitely worthwhile. I hope, like I said, people had their notebooks and their pens out because for you to be as young as you are, man, you definitely have a whole wealth of knowledge built up already in your life, man. I, I can foresee already that um, success is definitely on your horizon, man. So thank you so much. And thank you to our sponsor, McDonald's. We appreciate you powering this event today. And uh, thank you to Rolling Out as well for offering us this platform. Well, I appreciate you having me today. I also want to say thank you to our sponsor, McDonald's. Shout out to Rolling Out and Black and Positively Golden. And uh, if, if you enjoyed this, I, I don't need you to do anything but to reach back and mentor somebody else and, uh, and, and pour into somebody in your community. And you can start small and grow, you know. It, 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 you don't have to do it all at once. Just don't, don't ever give up and don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not good enough to do it. Yep. All right. Thank you guys. Take care. Right. Thanks.